Hi everyone! I get to lead the next part of our sermon this week on our everyday series. But first I just want to say that I really, really miss you guys and I wish I could be there with you guys in person. Right now I'm in Cheney, Washington and I've been spending a lot of time biking and a lot of time reading, um, racking up some miles and some hours um, on my bike and in my books. I've also been taking classes online at Western right now and learning about what that's looking like for me as I'm learning with my professors and learning with all the people who are going through this together. It's been an interesting experience, but it's one that I already know I've been growing a lot from and learning a lot from. So I hope that you guys have been growing and learning a lot too as this uh, new experience is happening to all of us and we're in this together. But so I get to start talking about the next part of this series and leading into the community part of it. And to first think about community, I want you guys to ponder some of the different communities that you're involved in. Like if you're involved in sports or if you play music at all, or if um, like at school or in your classes, those are all great places that we find community outside of the church. And those are great places to reference about some of the things that you love and some of the things that you think could be improved about other communities that you're involved in um, and just bring those communities together and feel included. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is attending church and why that's important to be a part of the church community. Romans 12, 4 through 5 says, For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. I know we've read this before, and this has a lot of different meanings, um, but this is just so applicable to what it looks like being in the church and being a part of this family and being a part of the members of this family. When you attend church, you find a safe group of people who want to know, know you and grow with you and care for you. And a lot of you, since you're in middle school right now, this church community has watched you grow up and is watching you grow up and is watching um, and supporting you as you make decisions in life and as you learn about yourself and as you learn and grow in your faith journey. They're there with you and they're walking with you and they're praying for you every single night as we go through this, which is also just incredible that you have that behind you and people who are thinking about you when oftentimes you don't even know that they're thinking about you. Um, but also it goes the other way too, because it's not that um, you're, the body is caring for you, but you're also a part of the body as well. You're part of the body of Christ and you are valuable to the community and your thoughts and experiences and attendance help the church make decisions about what they wanna do. Um, they help the church grow. They help the people in the church learn and create better experiences and make sure that everybody's feeling involved and loved in this incredible opportunity that we have to get to attend church. But why would we attend regularly, right? Because once once you go, um, you're part of that. People are thinking about you. Someone's praying for you. But why is it important that you go regularly? But also, when you think about it, you attend school regularly. You have sports practice for 10 hours a week, or you um, play your music for 12 hours a week and to practice it and to get better, you have to spend that time and you go in and you get excited about it and you intend, um, so often that at some point you have learned the skills and you could probably teach someone else. Um, but if you don't put in that extra time and stuff, it's harder to learn everything that you want to be able to lead someone through that. Um, which is that big, that big important step in um, our faith is going from learning about it ourselves into being able to teach others and bring others into it, which is an absolutely incredible experience. Um, so you want to you want to be attending church and you want to be learning and practicing those skills often and learning about new skills. Um, when we talk about growing in skill sets and growing in what we know. You see this right now. Hannah and Dan aren't always the ones giving the sermon. And that's because while they have incredible experiences and an incredible faith, um, it's still always important to hear from other people and hear about other people's faith experiences and their journeys. And we get to share that with everyone and we get to share that with who we are and we get to share that with the members of this body. So 
it's important that you have a lot of different people here and a lot of different people who you're growing from. Um, but if you don't engage in that all the way, then it's hard to have that variety of knowledge and that variety of growth and that variety of ways that you can talk about your faith and ways that you can express your faith. And then going down to, we have talked about what it looks like and like why it's important to attend, attend church, but also something that's important about attending church is you want to retain that knowledge that you're learning and growing from and all the things that you are experiencing there and all the incredible things that people are saying and helping you grow in. It's hard sometimes to keep it all locked away in your brain. I know when I go to class, I'll be sitting there and if I forget like my pen, can't take notes one day for some reason, I am just not going to be able to remember anything. So something that is important when we go to church um, and that I would encourage you all to start practicing and practicing it now while you have this extra time to practice would be taking notes. Um, when you attend church regularly, you're getting a lot of information and sometimes it's really easy to forget. But it's vital to practicing your faith outside of church. Because um, during a sermon, there's really only a short window of time that you're getting information and that people are giving information to you. Um, I know that when I'm sitting in main service and I'm listening to Christian, sometimes he's just talking so fast and I am like, whoa, 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 what did he just say? That was really cool, but I can't remember the verbiage that he used. And I'm like, I, I just need him to slow down. And um, honestly, sometimes I would go home and watch the video again for like those little parts that I needed to pull out. Um, but I've been finding out that while we're in quarantine, I can just pause him and rewind it 10 seconds and write down what he said, which is great. And I've been loving doing it that way um, and getting to experience it that way and getting to take a moment to pause when he says something that is profound or makes me stop and think I can stop that and have that experience um, and write it down. Note taking is a great way to record what we've learned, to see growth over time in our learning about um, who we were last year and what days in our lives and what things we learned that really changed and shaped how we were going to live out the rest of our week and what new practices and habits we were practicing. Um, they're a great place to write down questions because if you get a question during a sermon, uh, a, lot of, a lot of times it's really kind of hard to raise your hand in the middle and say, hey, 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 I have a question. I was wondering about this. Um, it's a little easier in 412 when there's not as many of us. But um, if you have a question and you want it answered, you can always write it down. And I would also encourage you to do research on your own to find the answers to those questions, read the Bible, um, and do some extra research is to add on to what you're learning. Um, but they're also a great way to find additional resources too when you're taking notes. So if you have that question, you're like, hey, I want to know about this. Um, and you can walk up to someone afterwards and say, hey, I had a question about this. Do you know any good resources that I could look to find this up um, or any good books to read or like, what's your favorite book of the Bible or where in the Bible can I find this? You can write that down and have it nice and organized. I'm a big fan of organization. So you can have that organized um, however it makes sense to you and however it makes sense for you to find that information and to find the different places that you are pulling information from and to really track what your life has looked like. Um, it's kind of similar to journaling. Actually, I found is that um, my notes in from sermons and my journal actually kind of track parallel to each other. Um, you don't really notice that when you're writing it, that your your experiences in church are um, leading into what your experiences in life look like. But looking back over my two notebooks side by side, they actually line up really well um, with the things that I am hearing and the things that I am practicing. Um, and they could, they could be compiled and you wouldn't know that they were two separate places. So I would encourage you to start taking notes and I would encourage you to start practicing that every day when you're doing that, um, watching the sermons here and when you're listening to Hannah, um, you can write down ways like song lyrics when you're doing worship that you're like, wow, that really resonated with me today. Um, and it's, it's just a great way to really engage with yourself and engage with the person who you're growing into. And then the last 
part, not the last part of the church community, but the last part that I'm going to talk to you guys about today is small groups and what that looks like and why that's also an important part of the church community and the eternal community of Christ um, and why it's important that you attend those regularly. Um, and the first thing is that you're, you are going to small group and you are engaging in meaningful relationships in a safe and accepting community. You're creating a place to grow for other people. You are answering those questions that people wrote down in their notes. Um, and you have this like incredible accountability with each other for being someone that people can look to and being someone that people can ask questions to and talk to freely. Um, there's a place where you spark other questions or new questions. Um, there are a place where your answers to other people's questions show diversity and broaden people's thoughts and broaden people's perspectives. Um, people are showing up and investing in you and supporting you and caring about you. Um, you definitely should attend and attend regularly. Um, and you can t take notes at small group too. write things down. I love writing things down. When I go out to coffee with people, um, it's not a small group, but I like writing things down that I remember about them. And so I can look back on it later and ask them about it and check in with them and make sure that they're doing well, make sure that they're still thriving and, um, if, asking if there's anything I can follow up praying for. So it's, it's a great place to continue to write down stuff and remember stuff and grow. Um, and it's also a really awesome opportunity for you to expand the community that you have as a small group. A lot of you were probably invited to a small group at some point, and that's what got you involved with Hillcrest. Um, or maybe that's how you've been involved with churches in the past. If somebody said, hey, I would love for you to come to this. This is a great and safe place and a great community, and I think you would add something to it. And that's so important because everybody has something to add to the community. And then looking at what this all looks like right now, I've gotten to touch on this a little bit, um, but this all still applies. The church community is still thriving. The church community is still strong, even at home, even amidst all of this. Um, it's still strong and people in churches are adapting to find ways to be creative and create that community while people are at home. All of our sermons are being recorded and posted online. Um, you can still take that time every Sunday to learn about God and take notes and to slow down and really use it. Um, and Feel, feel relaxed and have that Sabbath day where you can grow and spend it devoted to God. Um, you're still finding that and you're still finding people who are watching this video with you, people who you can ask questions to um, and get answers to. And it's just, it's such an incredible part, um, incredible thing to be a part of when all of this is going on to see that the church community is still strong and still growing. The last thing I'm going to leave you guys with is Psalms 133.1. How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. And isn't that so true? How good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. Um, I just want to leave you with that and leave you with uh, that feeling of goodness and that feeling of excitedness to be involved in this community and know that you are accepted and you are loved and that you are valuable to us and to everybody here and that there are people praying for you that you don't even know about. Um, I'm praying over all of you and I know there are so, so many more. And so I'll just close us in a prayer today. Dear Lord, thank you so much for all of the people here watching this video and for all of the ways that we get to be involved and the fact that we can still be creating that community and still be inviting people and still be taking notes and growing and learning um, about you amidst all this where it seems like so many other pieces of our lives are shut down, but your community is eternal and forever and um, the longest thing around here on earth. Um, we love you so, so much and I pray over all of the craziness that is happening in everybody's life right now and that you're there and present and um, our students are all feeling heard amidst all of this. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.